Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this, or welcome back. Uh, welcome to the City Council Candidate Forum, hosted by our one and only Dublin Chamber of Commerce. I am Dominic Piguero, and I am this year's chair of the Dublin Chamber of Commerce. Dublin Chamber of Commerce is the catalyst to small and medium-sized businesses within the city. If you haven't looked us up, please do. I would like to acknowledge a few people. We'd like to extend a special thanks to Chabot Las Positas Community College for hosting us in their boardroom this evening. And a special thanks to Ms. Sue Stevenson. She will be our timekeeper tonight. Finally, we are pleased to have our moderators from Embarcadero Media Foundation's East Bay Division with us, Ms. Gina Chanel, Division President, and Jeremy Walsh, Division Editorial Director, bring their expertise to guide tonight's conversation. Thank you all for being here, and let's get it started. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we are here to hear from the Dublin City Council District 3 candidates, Razi Hasni and John Murata. This is the only contested city council race on the ballot. There is another district that's on the ballot, but it is not a contested race. Again, I'm Gina. Uh, my co-moderator is Jeremy Walsh, our editorial director. Over here we have our staff reporter, Jude Strem, who is covering this portion of the forum. And our freelancer, Chuck Deckard, is taking photos. Janita Lyman is hanging out. She did the, she did the coverage for the mayoral portion. And thank you again to the Dublin Chamber of Commerce for partnering on the logistics of the forum and to the Chabot Las Positas Community College District for the use of this room and for coordinating the video recording. And finally, thank you to the City Council District 3 candidates for joining us. We will start with two minute opening statements from each candidate. Then each candidate will have two minutes to respond to questions. Our timekeeper, Sue, will signal when you have 30 seconds remaining and when to stop, and there will be a little noise, a little ding, ding, ding um, from the, from the uh, digital timing. In the interest of time and allowing as many questions to be posed as possible, we will ask the candidates to save any rebuttals for their closing statements. We have some prepared questions and some questions that were emailed to us from readers. We will also be collecting additional questions from the audience. If you have a question, there are index cards over there where Inga is showing them, and pens. You can write your question and signal for her or another chamber volunteer to pick it up and she will bring it to us. We will consolidate questions on the same subject and ask as many as time allows, but please understand that we will not be able to ask every question. At the end, each candidate will have three minutes for closing statements. And out of respect for the candidates and others, let's agree to that all audience members will be polite, attentive, and quiet as possible. In other words, please silence your cell phones at this point. Uh, we'll start in alphabetical order with candidate Hasni giving his opening statement first, and then we will alternate which one starts first. Thank you. Right there. Yes. That's why we put Sue there, so you can. <laughs> OK. Um, opening statements, two minutes. Hello, Dublin neighbors. Uh, my name is Razi Hasni, and I'm running for city council because I'm deeply passionate about our community. As a local business owner and a proud father of a high school senior who's right here at Dublin High School, I understand the joys, challenges, and opportunities that families like ours face day in and day out. In 2014, my wife and I founded Joya, a fitness company headquartered right here in Dublin. We've grown Joya from a single studio into the East Bay Fitness Powerhouse with locations in Dublin, Pleasanton, Livermore, and Blackhawk. Over 130 employees and a strong employee culture that actively supports giving back to community. My experience goes way beyond running, for, running a business. I've been heavily involved in the Dublin Chamber of Commerce, serving as chair in 2023, when I work to promote economic growth and support local business. In addition, through my work with the Dublin High School Athletic Boosters Club, I've helped raise critical funds for our student athletes to ensure they have resources they need to compete and thrive. Public safety is a top priority for me. Look, our police and fire departments are the backbone of a safe and thriving community, and we need to ensure that they are fully funded and supported to keep our homes, businesses, and neighborhoods secure. I'm committed to maintaining a balanced budget, 
that prioritizes safety without compromising other essential services. As Dublin grows, we must invest wisely, ensuring that our resources go where they're, where they're needed most, keeping our city safe and fiscally responsible. As a collaborative leader, leader and proven problem solver, I know how to work with others to achieve common goals. I face these challenges of growing a business, adapting to unexpected obstacles, and making tough decisions, all while fostering a culture of support and success. I'm running for city council, my neighbors, to bring the same spirit of collaboration and problem solving to our city government. I'm committed to keeping Dublin a vibrant, safe, and a beautiful place to live, work, and raise a family. Together, together we can ensure that Dublin remains a thriving community for everyone. I'm humbly asking for your vote and for your support to make this vision a reality. Thank you. And candidate Morata. Good evening, Embarcadero Media Foundation, the Dublin Chamber of Commerce, and a special welcome to my District 3 neighbors. My name is John Morata. Uh, Dublin is a city, the only city in my family and I have ever, actually ever known. We moved here 12 years ago from Illinois, and I've had the privilege of serving our community in various roles, from the board of the parent faculty organization at Dublin High School to a trustee on the Dublin United Soccer League. These experiences have taught me the value of listening and the importance of acting in the public's best interest rather than being swayed by either commercial interests or public or populist rhetoric. Dublin has a lot of pressing topics to address, and for my remaining time, I'll lay out my top three priorities. Number one, on public safety. This is actually a very incredibly personal topic for me. Uh, I know I'm gonna go way over if I keep talking, so I'm gonna leave some of my talking points for closing comments. Uh, but in summary, what we wanna look at is we must study and comprehend and act in equal measure on how our children's safety will be impacted by the Fallon Economic Development Zone and the Dublin Boulevard Extension Project. Number two, on affordable housing. In District 3, we're adding 650 new homes near the Waterford Shopping Center, with 100 designated as affordable housing. While progressive, we're leaving out the majority of the market-priced housing. I will fight against digital companies colluding to inflate rents, ensuring our young police officers, firefighters, and teachers can actually afford to live in the communities that they serve. Number three, on labor. I stand for the dignity of work and fair pay. As Dublin grows, there is an ample opportunity for all of us. Uh, goal number two of the new Dublin Economic Development Strategy focuses on infill investment. We need to address vacant storefronts and boost our economy. Let's work together to fill these spaces and ensure our trades can take pride in the Dublin growth. To be an active resident of Dublin means going beyond a single platform, a single measure. It's to be, the fa it's to be faithful to a set of ideals that is the American the new American backyard. Thank you. Thank you. And our first question, we will start with John Murata. Uh, and we'll jump right in on the east side and talk about your position on Measure II, dubbed on the ballot as uh, the Dublin Traffic Relief Clean Air Open Space Preservation Measure, the result of which uh, could have a major impact on District 3. Livermore was prepared to share in the costs of the Dublin Boulevard extension when there was an agreement the Crosby property would remain open space. Dublin has talked about potentially annexing the entire property, which would exclude Livermore from sharing the cost. And housing, which traditionally pays for infrastructure like this, is not part of the development, the proposed development. What do you think about the proposed development and potential annexation? And if this land is annexed, where will funding for the extension come from? Uh, allow me to start with uh, a little bit of history, if I may. Uh, in 1648, uh, the Treaty of Westphalia was signed. By definition, the Treaty of Westphalia defines what's called sovereignty. So sovereignty, by definition, means you do what you do within the boundaries of your own city. What that means in, my res in respect to uh, Proposal II is that from the view of us as being good neighbors to Livermore, it's extremely important that we define and also uphold the definition of sovereignty. So if Livermore is voting in, in accordance with us working toward that, then I'm in support of it. If they uh, have a, co uh, a conversation about not supporting that, uh, I, will, I wanna understand why. But from the perspective of uh, do I agree to proposal II, um, it's yet to be determined exactly how we'll benefit from it. The way that the budget today is being defined is um, somewhat nebulous. So I want to understand who's paying for what and where that will come from, because there's still a lot of unknowns left to answer. 
Thank you. And Rosie Hosting. Livermore is not supporting it. So um, let me start off, let me preface with this. I want to make sure that uh, you understand that my decision on Measure I has really, nothing to do on how, has really nothing to do with how I will act on city council. The cat's out of the bag with this one. It's already on the ballot. When I, if I do, if I should have the privilege of getting on city council, I'll make sure that I you know, examine all opposing points of views, supporting points of views, dive into the details of a project and, and, a, and, a, uh, and a motion before I vote on it. So having said that, the ballot's already, I mean, the, the, the cat's already out of the bag and it's already on the ballot. The short answer is yes, I will support measure two. There is a long answer and there's a lot of details that I wanna go into and I wanna explain why I will support measure two. First and foremost, this is a vote to allow us to modify that open space agreement to consider our options on development of this road. This is not a vote to begin building the road. It's a, it's a, it's a way for us to put this measure in our tool, a tool in our tool belt to allow us to be able to negotiate a deal that makes sense. Second, I want to make sure that, you know, whatever we do, when it gets time to a shovel-ready project, that we have an EIR review and CEQA reviews, or the relevant CEQA, review, CEQA reviews prior to commencing any kind of development to determine what the environmental impact of is going to be on this road. We need to come to terms with the owners. Third, we need to come to terms with the owners of the property. We also need to truly study the traffic impact to make sure that we support those new businesses that we want to bring in, but also make sure that we mitigate traffic impacts on the residents living off of Dublin Boulevard. And I also think we need to update our cost estimates on this road. It's $150 million, I understand that, but I believe that it's about, you know, those estimates are a little old, and we all know we've experienced inflation, so we want to make sure we get updated cost estimates. Look, I support open space. We want to make sure to maintain our open space and protect our eastern urban limits, but I also know how important it is for, be, for us to be able to bring in some higher paying jobs to Livermore, to Dublin. Thank you. Uh, question number two, uh, we will start with Razi Hasni. Residents continue to be focused on public safety in Dublin. Where does public safety sit in your list of campaign priorities, and how do you propose to improve public safety in the city if elected? Thank you for the question. I think uh, I'm, I'm uh, the only candidate here tonight to be endorsed by the Alameda County firefighters, so I'm really proud of that. Public safety is number one. It's the backbone of, uh, of, of any city infrastructure. Looking at the grand scheme of things, I'm very happy to see that Dublin spends about 42% of its annual, of its expenses on public safety. It's important. Um, look, with the expansion, I, I live in District 3, with the expansion of uh, Dublin Boulevard and development of the Fallon East Economic Development Zone, it's going to be imperative of us to make sure that we have the resources to be able to support our police officers and our firefighters. And it's no secret that we've, we're going through environmental changes right now, and we're experiencing fire, you know, more fires, so that our eastern borders sit on the fire ridge line. So I want to make sure in talking to our firefighters that they have enough support to be able to keep our homes and, the potential, and, and our potential businesses that we're going to be introducing in that zone safe and, and ready to go. Uh, look, Dublin has some 62 police officers, uh, some 60 plus police officers. I'm very proud of the work that our police department has done here, and I will continue to support them in the best in the best possible way. I do believe as we grow, you know, the general rule of thumb is to have one police officer for every thousand citizens. Uh, so I do I do believe there's room for improvement. I'm very happy to see that Dublin impl implemented uh, the be behavioral health unit and fully staffed it. I think that's a great way for us to move forwards and and uh, solve some problems without involving our police officers. Uh, and third, you know, I live in District 3. I want to be able to improve traffic and parking around, around my district. I want to make sure that people can get to and from uh, their work to and from their commute without hitting unnecessary stoplights, or I want to make sure that we have bikeable lanes. I want to make sure that we're able to be able to support our infrastructure. So as we grow, it is imperative that we keep our eye on the prize and making sure that we support public safety. From, from our police officers to, uh, to, to our Alameda County firefighters and public works, that is a number one priority. That is what I'll be focusing on when I, should I have the honor of being elected to city council. Thank you. And John Murata. Well, let's, uh, on public safety, let's actually talk about real stories, shall we? So uh, just two days ago, uh, my wife and I, we ordered Thai food from Thai Express over at Alford's. And the conversation I had with the owner was simply about crime, right? With regard to how she's facing it and the stories that she would tell me, uh, they were so impactful that I, 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 I felt for her. And 
what she expressed to me was the Ulfert's uh, Center uh, has specific areas that today seem to be a little bit dark uh, or they're not well trafficked, right? With the, with the exodus of certain businesses, is leaving vacant lots. So one of the measures I'd like to work on with not only Ulfert's but also in, in terms of policy is how do we, if we're going to provide better safety, how do we decrease the surveillance surface area so that our, our enforcement forces can also uh, fine tune where they police, right? If you have something that's 35,000 square feet, half of it's empty, well, why would the police decide to, or, or private security decide to go surveil parts that aren't tra well trafficked? So working with her, uh, the, the owner of, of the restaurant, we, I put together a few ideas that would allow her to present to her developers a way to increase lighting, which would hopefully also decrease the amount of potential crime. But also, in some ways, we would want to provide education. And that education being with the young folks that traffic, that go to Boba, right? If, if you see your grandmother or somebody's grandmother walking from their store to their car in a dark area, please be nice. Please take that Boy Scout moment and help them walk to their car, right? That should also decrease the, the potential crime that could happen. And considering how close it is to the interstate, we know what that means in terms of probability of crime happening. So let's stop it. Thank you. And we're going to go back to candidate Murata to start this question. Shifting to Dublin's local economy, what ideas do you have to promote economic development both citywide and in your district specifically? Please consider the question as it applies to small and medium-sized local businesses, as well as the large companies and retailers with a strong presence here. Well, if I, if I may say, uh, what I bring to the table with regard to that is 17 years in the commercial sector. Uh, my background is actually in mergers and acquisitions. So on a daily basis, I read financial reports, I look at the potential synergies that could be achieved through value by bringing two companies together, and, but in relation to that, it's the go-to-market strategies that these enterprises actually have that create value for the economies around them. One of the aspects that I certainly want to focus in on is our ability to look at goal number two within the new economic development strategy that's being presented. Goal number two talks about infill investment. What that basically means is, how do we find ways to bring business back into current vacant lots? That's, for me, one of the most important, quickly impactful ways that we can bring businesses back. What that means is, from the perspective of a go-to-market strategy, we should be working collectively with our economic development teams within the city to find those businesses that would want to come to Dublin because of its location, also because of its diverse workforce. Secondly, I'm actually an investor within Bay Angels. What that means is I also have access to dozens of startups that are looking for places to build their business. And because our position of where we are, consider where we could have talent come from San Ramon, from Livermore, from San Leandro, all these wonderful places that can bring our necessary skills to those startups that would want to house their businesses here. As they grow, we grow with them, and we get to achieve growth through their uh, through economic development because of the policies we create. Thank you, and candidate Hosni. Thank you, neighbors, ladies and gentlemen. This is my wheelhouse. I'm a small business owner. This is what I've done for the last since 2004. I've been self-employed in, in various capacities. Lately, in the last 15 years, I've owned a small business right here in Dublin. Look, uh, my priorities for Dublin and are, and and District Three are are thus. I want to focus in District 3 on Hacienda Crossings. I will prioritize getting Hacienda Crossings fully leased out, re revitalizing it as a major business and community center. It's important for our district and it's important for our community to have Hacienda Crossings revitalized. I miss dining at that restaurant right across the street from, from the IMAX theater. We've got some big box retailers right there that we're going to fill. And I'm super excited to be able to you know, hear some uh, developments from our economic development team in Hazel Weatherford saying that we've got leases on the way there. So I want to be able to support that community. I want, to be, I want to focus on East Dublin business growth in East Dublin. And supporting business growth in East Dublin is key to attracting higher wage employers. That's the key here. Is our, our job in Dublin, our, our figures in Dublin as far as jobs to household is lower than the average around here. 
So bringing in higher wage employers is going to be key to making sure that we are able to compensate for a lower development revenue from residential areas later on as we progress in the budget. And I do hope we get a chance to talk about the budget. Types of industries that we want to bring in and focus in on. This is my wheelhouse. I've, that's why I've been in the Dublin Chamber of Commerce. That's why I served on the Dublin Chamber of Commerce and supported local business communities. We can focus on, and I have connections with, manufacturing, creative technologies, design, biomedical, uh, clean tech. There are so many different opportunities for us to be able to support these businesses and bring them in and uh, increase and support, our, support, support the economy there. Dublin has about 22,000 jobs in Dublin, but 22 of those, 22 percent of those, are retail trades. So I want to focus on bringing in higher-paying jobs and supporting our economy and being and, and infusing and making us, you know, be, be stronger. And I do hope we get to talk about the downtown-specific project because that's a big part of what I want to discuss as well. Thank you. And going back to candidate Hosni, um, what are your goals related to new housing in District Three? What, uh, what will you do when your vision or that of your district constituents conflicts with city priorities or your peers on the council? You know, I've lived through a lot of the great housing debates in Dublin. I've, I've, I've seen it all. I've, I've, I've experienced a lot of, you know, housing uh, pains that our citizens have experienced. I think, you know, we fulfilled most of the RENA obligations in this RENA cycle as far as housing is concerned, but I am committed to transparent government. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm committed to transparent government. I'm committed to keeping an open door policy as your city council member. I want to make sure that when developments happen, when SDRs get approved, when site reviews get approved, from the development process all the way towards the actual physical, you know, shovel-ready projects to actual buildings going up, that you are involved, that you are aware. Transparency is key to making sure that we keep our government operating on the up and up. Community engagement is the other piece of this puzzle. We can be as transparent as possible. We can put, you know, our projects up on the Dublin website. We can, you know, you guys are going to know exactly how many units are going up. 10% of this project is going to be below market rate housing. You know, 15% are going to be above market rate housing. You're going to see negotiations. But the key to this is making sure that we keep an, our eye on the prize and making sure that we support our residents, listen, and being able, before making any decisions on motions in our city, is uh, being able to listen and, and, and act on that, act uh, accordingly. So transparent and engaging, and, and engaging uh, uh, with, our, with our residents, District 3 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Murata? Would you rephrase the question for me? What are your goals related to new housing in District 3? What will you do when your vision or that of your district constituents conflicts with city priorities or your peers on the council? Thank you. I'll take the second one first, which is what, uh, what would I do if, if the constituents in District 3, their opinions conflicted with City Council? Uh, that one for me is, it's all about making sure that we listen to our neighbors. Uh, one of the plans that I have is actually to increase the number of town halls that we have in preparation for these large measures that come up for conversation during City Council. I don't think we do enough of them today, to be honest. Uh, we have uh, surveys and we have uh, our social media posts and these are useful but when do we get to the heart of the matter by having and that, that's when we have conversations with people face to face that's when we have conversations over dinner over uh, a quick beer right those are things that are necessary for us to truly feel and value the conversation and the feedback that's coming uh, from our neighbors so that one is for me one of the most important because when we hear that, that is what we bring with us to City Council. Uh, my, my earlier statement about voting on behalf of my citizens actually rings true. Uh, based on what I hear from them and their opinions and their heartfelt feelings, that is the way that I will vote on particular measures. It's not my personal opinion, it's not populist rhetoric, it's not about uh, commercial influence. Right? It's about making sure that we listen and we execute according to what they want because they're the ones who put us in this seat. Um, and then the first part of your question was, what do I look forward to in terms of our housing and, and the development of our housing? Well, uh, across from Waterford is 650 new units that are, that are going in. Uh, that I can't change, right? Uh, the allocation according to state compliance for affordable housing, that I can't change either. So those, those are in. 
but what we can look at is how do we provide the, the next set of rules that, and policies that allow us to help set what comes up next. And that is what I look forward to working on. Thank you. Uh, next question, number five. We will start with John Morata. Uh, what is your position on Measure JJ, dubbed the Government Accountability Act? There are so many elements to that single ballot question. Do you support all of them? And will you vote yes or no on the ballot? Uh, well, there's a lot to that. <laughs> there certainly is. Uh, what I can say is uh, accountability is an extremely important part of not only my personal beliefs, but in one in which holding this seat is top priority. So uh, in terms of government accountability, uh, if I may tell another story, which is simply as I was preparing to run for office, one of the things that I decided to do was retroactively look at what are all the measures and things that are important to this city. So I can honestly tell you that by about page 5,000, reading through a bunch of agendas, my brain was about to explode. There was just too much to understand. So working with some colleagues, we found a way to not only be able to summarize and find out the necessary findings that were necessary for me to provide an educated response, but also one that I found was really important to us. So when it comes to accountability and transparency, I think it is an incredibly important part of who we are as a democracy to allow us to all understand what's happening within a council. Uh, why that's important is because simply from the fact that what was decided at council also impacts our, our lives on a daily basis. And if we don't understand that and we don't have transparency to that, then are we a true democracy? So let me ask this question back, which is if we want to uphold our beliefs as a true democracy, then we should have transparent government. Thank you, and, and was that a yes or no on JJ? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Razi Hasni, same question. Jeremy, this is the easiest question you've asked. Look, <laughs> my Dublin neighbors, this ballot measure is really about term limits. It's not about accountability. <laughs> so specifically to increase term limits for eight to 12 years for the mayor and the council members. That's what this ballot measure is about. City council made the correct decision to let the voters decide. That's it, it's simple. Also, agree to that, also, I agree that the term limit extension should not apply to our current mayor and council members, as the ballot measure states. The ballot measure also includes the three accountability changes, which, if approved, will increase transparency and reduce opportunities of conflicts with uh, a conflict of interest. Each is a good idea that I do support. So I'll be voting in favor of the measure, and I encourage my Dublin voters who support increasing term limits from eight to 12 years and incrementally tightening the city's accountability standards to consider voting yes. Thank you. Uh, and next question, right back to Razi Hasni. Uh, the development of a true community downtown for Dublin has been on residents' minds and the city's public process for many years. City staff reports on the subject say there will be sales tax and property tax agreements with the developer to fund uh, the so-called downtown Dublin preferred vision. But there are a few specifics. Tell us what you think funding for the project should look like and how likely is it to actually come to life anytime soon? Jeremy, Gina, I hope we get a couple of more questions like that. I think downtown is a big part of what we need to be talking about as a community and it affects uh, District 3. It all, I mean, it affects all of, all of Dublin, but it also affects District 3. Implementing this downtown specific vision plan is key to our growth strategy here in Dublin. We need to be able to do this the right way. And uh, I do feel that the ball is moving on it and it's happening uh, sooner than later. Transparency in the development is a key. I've talked about transparency and community engagement, making sure that we keep the process transparent and keep our community engaged. Dublin's downtown, I, I, I would like it, and I think our residents would also like it to be the jewel of Tri-Valley. It needs to stand out, offering a unique experience that reflects our city's character, and I love the way that the downtown vision has been mapped out and played out for everybody, to, for everybody to, be a, to support it. Uh, I love the focus on life sciences and biotech. I love being able to bring in life sciences and biotech into, into, the, into that, and I was very pleased at the last city council meeting when, uh, when a portion of the life sciences and biotech was dedicated about 10,000 square feet to uh, uh, bringing in some co office co-working space. I think that's a great idea. Um, I, I, I love the idea of having an open square in the middle of downtown, that's great. Uh, I like the idea of a central square and an open space that residents can enjoy uh, coffees, go on walks on, and shop at local retailers. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm a business owner. I do own a business on, uh, on downtown. I've got, I've got one on Village Parkway. 
The number one thing that we look at as a business owner, and if you want to support small retailers, we're looking at building about, as part of the Dublin Commons project, we're looking at putting in about 100,000 square feet of retail for shopping and retail. That's great. That's going to increase, that's going to bring the downtown vibe. But as a business owner, a general room of thumb that I look at when I write leases, when I negotiate leases, is I need five parking spaces for every thousand, for every thousand square feet. So I want to make sure we have enough parking to support that, that downtown vision. I also want to have, you know, looking at the Dublin Commons project, which is the first phase of the downtown, I really want to discuss, do we really need eight stories? I want to really look at that and see what, what makes sense. I know we have an allocation to fulfill, but do we really need it? Thank you. John Morata. Thank you. I, very similar to my colleague, I too am in support of Dublin downtown. Uh, but I do have some concerns. Uh, let me start with the positive sides of things first, and then I can go to uh, my concerns. Uh, from the perspective of the sales tax and property tax that will generate, uh, I, I think that is a fine balance. And my platform is actually on uh, about balance, meaning economic development, uh, but also uh, not at the expense of public safety. So one of the areas I do want to consider is how will we reinforce our infrastructure so that the traffic flows in a way that does not confuse and create more problems than what we're trying to generate in terms of benefits. Uh, additionally, one of the areas I also want to consider looking at is this, uh, this multi-story uh, parking garage that we're, we're building. Uh, 1,100 spaces, I believe, is the estimated number of spots. Uh, well, who's paying for that? Well, we all know who's paying for that. So the consideration is, where are we going to get that funding? With the amount of capital projects that we have on the docket today, um, I find that our potential surplus that we currently have will depreciate incredibly fast. So what does that do? It puts us into a deficit. Right? And today, Dublin is one of the few cities in this area that is running a surplus. So how do we maintain that surplus right, without uh, overspending uh, with, with, in terms of our, our growth vision? So we'll look at finding ways to make sure that we balance that out from the perspective of being able to not only grow, but find ways that we do not overspend. Uh, and one of the other topics I want to consider is from the uh, perspective of public safety, Let's ensure that as we develop and increase our resident base, that we also provide them the safety and comfort of living that they do expect as a new downtown Dublin. Similar to what we see today in areas of, of Fremont and Santana Row, right, there are a certain sense of being safe and feeling good about being in those areas. Thank you. Um, we've come to the final question of the evening, and it's going that's it. Um, it was quick, so start making notes for your closing statements. Um, so we're going to start with uh, candidate Murata. And what do you think is the most important issue in District 3, and how will you work to solve it? For me, uh, I'm going to be a little bit self-serving with, with regard to my answer, which is, I would love District 3 to become a much more bikeable city, part of the city. Uh, uh, the reason is my wife and I and kids, we go from where we live up by Fallon uh, Sports Park down to Splatter, down to the farmer's market. And when we do that, uh, there are certain parts of the roads that do not have uh, well-defined bike lanes. So we're either rumbling through a bunch of gravel or we're having to divert ourselves to avoid the potholes that exist. So why, I talk, why do I talk about that story from the beginning? Uh, because what we also understand is that D District 3 in Dublin holds one of the highest populations of the Asian diaspora. Well, in that case, the Asian diaspora also like to walk in the evenings. So providing public safety for them and for them to be able to walk safely is extremely important. Why? Because from the perspective of their well-being and citizen well-being, they need places to feel safe walking, right? We can do things that are not expensive, but we can, we can do what Sunnyvale does, which is put these um, barrier poles along the way. They're, they're well lit, so that as you're driving in the evening, uh, it's, it's very easily visible for those who are in those lanes, as well as for the drivers. So uh, from a larger perspective, it's ensuring that we have the right places for folks to feel safe and feel healthy and be able to provide a much wetter, better well-being of Dublin residents in District 3. Thank you. Candidate Hosni? 
Thank you. I want to take a few seconds just to talk about our budget with regards to downtown project and respond out of this area. And then I'll focus in on the three answers for my district three priorities. I'll keep in time. So um, I want to make sure, first and foremost, we all like to walk at night. We all like to feel safe. And I'm very proud of our Dublin Police Department for keeping us, keeping us safe and keeping us uh, protected here. Um, let me talk about District 3 particularly, and I've already touched on this a little bit. First and foremost, I want to focus on making sure that we support our businesses and our retailers, our restaurants at Hacienda Crossings. As I've said, I want to make sure that we get that area fully leased out and that doesn't become another sad story like Stone Ridge Mall. I want to improve traffic and parking around Emerald High. I want to make sure as we see, uh, you know, we've seen the two uh, graves in and around Emerald High School. Right now, it's, that area is getting super, super busy. And uh, walking that neighborhood and talking to my neighbors around that neighborhood, I, I have seen their disruptive lifestyle, their disrupted life. So I want to study the traffic patterns. I want to make sure that the area around Emerald High School, that we can mitigate their traffic and, and our residents out of that whole area in and in front of uh, Emerald High School is, are able to uh, get in and out of their homes and be able to park their cars safely. And last but not least, of course, District 3, our, our biggest focus is going to be development in East Dublin and making sure that we support our development in East Dublin. So those are my priorities for District 3. But look, as you know, I'm keenly aware as of being elected, should I have the honor of being elected to the council, that there's three out of five votes that I'll have to, that I'll have to get. So I'm, a, I'm, a run, I, 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 you know, I'm running to represent District 3, but I really represent all of Dublin. It takes three out of five votes on city council to be able to get things accomplished. And I'm a team player and I believe I can, I can influence and I can change and I can listen when it comes to that idea. With regards to really quick on the downtown project, I understand that the parking is gonna cost a, a lot of money and it's about 75 to $80 million, but you cannot consider bringing in and spending a lot of, you know, bringing in 100,000 square foot of retail without having enough parking to support it. And that's what I'll be advocating for when I'm on, should I have the honor of being elected. Thank you. Uh, now, now we'll move on to closing statements, which is also a good opportunity for rebuttals or to touch on something uh, we didn't tonight. Each candidate will have up to three minutes to provide closing comments. Going in reverse alphabetical order this time, we will start with John Morata. Okay. Well, thank you for this evening. It's been fun. Uh, this is my first time, so I'm enjoying it. Uh, let's, let's talk about three specific numbers. 110, 1. 110 is the average heart rate for an 11-year-old child and when I got the call that my daughter was hit by a car, I wondered if I'd ever hear her heartbeat again. So that's a, that's a pretty nasty nightmare to have to live through. And uh, when my daughter was hit, there was one driver in the car who was distracted because she was talking on the phone. So I stand before you today with a conviction to ensure that public safety is my number one priority. Um, I've already put a few things into, into, uh, into play. Uh, so we're talking about what, you know, what am I executing today? I've seeded the idea of a, of a traffic impact assessment with the incoming city manager uh, to look at Gleason Drive and Central Parkway as the plans for Fallon EDZ, as well as the Dublin Boulevard extension get, get going along. Um, Mayor McCorston is calling for better e-bike and e-scooter policies since I seeded the idea to him at the last public comment a month ago. And uh, I'm working with my HOA to press the city for speed bumps near Cobalt Elementary after a young boy was hit by a car while getting to school. So these are not concepts. These are not concepts at all. These are things that we're doing today and we need action. So we're so busy uh, living in a democracy that often we forget to engage in it. So I'll repeat, 110, 11, one. Each of us deserves, uh, sorry, each of us deserves to hear our child's heartbeat as we kiss them a good night's sleep. On city council, I commit to upholding this self-evident right. So in my opening comments, I want to reframe affordable housing as affordable living. Uh, a home is more than just the four walls. It includes bills for water, electricity, and insurance. Um, I'll work with the state representatives to tackle our insurance crisis. As Assemblywoman Rebecca Barakan pointed out, uh, with many families, including herself, um, she was dropped from insurance coverage. So let's make sure that we find ways to provide insurance coverage for hundreds of our citizens in District 3. Lastly, I strongly support the vital role of trades in our economic development strategy. My father-in-law, Bob, was a mason for 50 years. Uh, he taught me that quality comes from apprenticeship, which is what makes American trades one of the best in the world. 
We must ensure a strong pipeline of skilled tradespeople, and I support their learning with our local projects. In closing, uh, I talked a lot, I said a lot, so how do we summarize everything that, uh, that's a key takeaway for this evening? In single definition, my platform is about balance. My policy methodology is driven from acquiring data and assistant feedback. So that is, uh, for me, what's really important for being in city council. Thank you. Thank you. Rousey Hasni. Thank you for that, and thank you for that amazing, inspired story of cautionary tale. Um, thank you all for being here, for listening, for being involved in our great democracy, and thank you to the Pleasanton Weekly and uh, the Dublin Chamber of Commerce for moderating this debate. Forum. I grew up inspired by my parents, ladies and gentlemen, who dedicated their lives to helping others. My mother, a Peace Corps nurse, and my father, an educator. They instilled in me the values of hard work, compassion, and service to community. These values have guided me throughout my life, and they are the driving force behind why my commitment it is what it is to Dublin, and my candidacy is what it is to the City Council. As a father, husband, small business owner, and entrepreneur, I am your candidate for this critical time as we transition from building homes to fostering and supporting businesses that will improve our local economy. I've seen firsthand how strategic growth can benefit our community, and I'm committed to making that Dublin remains a city where opportunity and quality of life go hand in hand. In 2023, I served as the, Dublin, as the chair of the Dublin Chamber of Commerce, working closely with local businesses to promote smart economic development and transparency. As a collaborative, as a collaborative leader and a proven problem solver, I'm committed to ensuring Dublin remains a thriving city with opportunities for high-paying jobs, a vibrant local economy, and a supportive environment for all for businesses and residents alike. Our city is at an exciting turning point, ladies and gentlemen, with major developments like the Fallon East Project and the Downtown Specific Plan. I'm passionate about ensuring our downtown becomes a unique and vibrant hub, the jewel of Dublin, where small and large businesses alike can thrive and residents can live and play. We have the opportunity to attract industries like life sciences and biotech, bringing high quality jobs to our residents and fueling the economic growth. Public safety, which my opponent talked about a lot, is another key focus of ours. I will work to ensure that our police, our fire, and our public works departments are fully supported as our, daily, uh, as our city grows. District 3, in particular, faces incredible opportunities for growth. I'll prioritize revitalizing Hacienda Crossings, supporting business expansion in East Dublin, and attracting higher paying employers in fields like manufacturing technology and biomedicine. We need to ensure our infrastructure, from roadways to bike lanes, keeps pace with our growth, while protecting our parks and open spaces. Dublin's financial health is strong, but we must look to our future and we must continue to plan strategically. I've committed to maintaining a balanced budget, fully supporting public safety, and investing in our parks and recreation to keep Dublin the vibrant, beautiful city that we all love. While I'm running to represent District 3, my commitment is to serve all of Dublin. I know how to work as part of a team, and I'm ready to collaborate with fellow council members to keep our city on the path to success. Together, we can ensure Dublin continues to be a place where dreams thrive, businesses grow, and families flourish. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the only candidate here tonight endorsed by County Supervisor David Halbert. I'm endorsed by former mayors Melissa Hernandez and Tim Sabranti, as well as our current mayor, Mike McCorston. I'm endorsed by our current city council member, Janine Thalbin, and I'm so proud to have the endorsement of our Alameda County firefighters because I've worked with, the, with these people hand in hand over the last few years. I have the vision, the dedication, and the leadership skills, and I humbly ask for your vote. Let's build a brighter future for Dublin together. Thank you. Thank you. On, on behalf of the Pleasanton Weekly, I would like to thank the candidates, Razi Hasni and John Murata, uh, the Dublin Chamber of Commerce, and Inga Houston in particular, and the College District venue. Uh, the candidates might even be willing to stick around and answer a few questions uh, from audience members. Bring it on. <laughs> a recording of this forum will be available soon through PleasantonWeekly.com and our YouTube channel. To learn more about supporting our coverage of Dublin and our Embarcador Media Foundation, which is now an independent journalism nonprofit organization, go to embarcadoromedia.org or visit our table at the, the front of the room there. We're so grateful for your support this evening, and we look forward to our four remaining election forums across the Tri-Valley. Next up, Pleasanton School Board on Wednesday, September 25th. Have a great evening.